yo, yo, what's going on, everyone? It is Friday. <clears throat> it is Friday night. You know what time it is. We're in and off the week strong with one of the heroes in Orlando hip hop history. Yes, you're watching the Sound of Orlando show with your boy Rome live and direct from Orlando, Florida. Like we always do at this time, it is time for the Sound of Orlando show. And we're talking about Orlando hip hop history. This girl encompasses everything about Orlando hip hop and the things we have all known to love when it comes to representation of the South, impact of music, all things hip hop of the state of Florida and the South region. It went from Ozone Magazine to the Ozone Awards to her writing her own book. This girl went from zero to a hundred in minutes. So without any further ado, let me bring on my sister who I am very proud of. The one, the only, Julia. Beverly, welcome to the show, Julie. What's going on? What is going on, girl? Been a long time. She's she's going about right now. She's always on the road making things happen. What's going on, girl? Welcome to the show show. Uh-oh. Me, uh, you caught me right on right on the road. You know, I'm, I'm you got me live and live and living color right now. So I heard that, man. It's awesome. It's awesome. Show those. The so show that intro. Wow. What's that? You so you're doing a, a series on on Orlando uh, Orlando legends. I'm I'm honored to be um, considered a, a Orlando oh. uh, notable. You can't, you can't, you're so modest. Uh, come on. Like, I mean, I remember your, your humble beginnings, your start in the industry and it, you went from zero to a hundred in like a blink of an eye. And you're part of the reason why a lot of these people were able to do what they do today. Um, your drive, your, your vision, um, you were you, you were doing something that no one else had the vision or had the will to do, man. You put a lot of people in place. You made a lot of things happen for the city in a real way, which was like unheard of at the time, considering you know the city and how it is sometimes. Everybody's out for themselves. You kind of put everybody in a place to win. Um, so uh, it, it's just... It's just an honor to be talking to you at this space and this moment in your life. I appreciate it. I mean, it was it was a team effort. There were a lot of people from Orlando who, you know, really helped me get started. And, and you know, although I did a lot of the, the content of the magazine myself, as far as the writing and photography, I feel like the reason why it really took off as far as, um, momentum that we gained was because of the street teams that we had in different cities and you know we had like all the different every city throughout the south we had a, a, somebody that would get a box of magazines or two or three boxes and go distribute them and take them out to nightclubs and and radio stations and so ultimately that's where the the power of the ozone brand came from was having those those street teams and having those people like really on the ground and um so yeah, that's 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 really I can't just take credit for it all myself. You know, it was really a lot of people who who contributed and and um, but I'm glad we were able to represent for the city. You know, ozone was named after Orlando, of course. So the fact that we were able to eventually establish a, a really an international brand because we did have some some international distribution as well. So the fact that we were able to come from being a small local magazine to being worldwide, um, you know. I, I'm pretty, I, I try to be hum, pretty humble about it. <laughs> I think I am, hey. you know, just cons, just to consider it motivation for anybody else who's trying to start anything, you know, there's, cause I wouldn't have really envisioned it getting as big as it did. So 
you know, anything that you can envision or, or it might become even bigger than what you think it can become with the, the right work ethic and, you know, it's a beautiful thing, so. Well, let's, well, we're talk, we kind of, we kind of dropped in the middle of a movie. Uh, shout out to Quentin Tarantino, who's famous for that, drops you right in the middle of the movie. But let's go right back to the beginning. What got you into putting up a publication for Orlando? What would, what went into the idea? Um, I know some of us already know that story, but for those that don't know, what what was some of your motivation to start um, that first publication, the Orlando Source, and, and get that going? What was what, what was behind that idea? Well, actually, um, Merck Design had started Orlando Source. It wasn't it wasn't my idea. Um, he had actually he w- he had taken the Source logo and like literally just added Orlando like to their logo and. You know, I, kind of, I, I, I think that, um, it, I mean, it's been a long time, but if I remember correctly, um, I think Jesse Jazz was probably the first person who had reached out to me because I was doing, I had, I had actually got fired from my corporate job, dropped out of college, and um, I was really just um, wanting to pursue photography. So I had started shooting a lot of stuff like aspiring artists and aspiring models and things like that locally. And I think, I think it was just, who reached out and said, you know, Hey, I heard this magazine is starting up. They need a photographer. So I initially I had met with Mert and I was going to just, it was kind of just an exchange of services. I was going to go, um, he was going to get me passes to go shoot some stuff at the radio station concert. And, um, I was going to get him, you know, the, the work for the publication. And so I remember shooting, it was a Ja Rule, um, concert over by the airport and, <laughs> They uh they had like backstage the whole catering set up, so we had like free dinner and you know, I was I was broke at the time. I was like, Wow, they they even feed you and everything. So that's always a joke in the music industry, it's like we're all just here for the free food. Right. So, um I was into uh I was into like graphic design and, and I was learning like Photoshop and stuff like that. So I remember when I sent instead of just giving Mert the pictures, I had I I laid them out like how I wanted to be on the page and I put little captions and stuff and so I think he was kind of impressed with that and he said hey I need you know I need somebody to do the layout for the magazine because he had a for people who don't know Mert like he used to do all the club flyers you know for all the parties and everybody's album cover and um but he had he had a designer but he was kind of overworked so he said hey I want you to you know come do the, the layout so I did the layout for the second issue of Orlando Source and I, I told them, hey, we gotta change the logo because we can't just be it's bad enough you take their name, you can't just see their logo, you know, we're not gonna be able to go very far with that. So um so he had <laughs> CJ um his designer came up with that logo with with the O. And um yeah I did the layout for the second issue. I remember him sitting there with me. It probably we probably were in there for a good 20, 24 hours straight and he was paying me by the hour. And so after that issue, I think he regretted paying me by the hour when he saw like the amount of time that was involved. And he said, yeah. hey, why don't you be my business partner? So, you know, as far as financially, that wasn't really a good decision for me, but it ended up in the long run, it was a good decision. You know, I just really wanted the, the experience of jumping into something. And so really, I, you know, I, I give Merck credit because he, he took the initiative on starting something i think you know greg g was doing something around the time with big life i don't know if that's where Merck got the idea but greg was doing a magazine called big life and um i think you know Merck's Merck's vision for it was a little different than than mine you know he he wanted a place to be able to sell ads to all the the local um artists and people that were coming to him to get flyers designed and you know i i viewed it as something to display my photography because I want to ultimately get a job with the source or double XL. And I didn't know how to really get their attention because I couldn't, I left messages and nobody would call me back. And, you know, I'm in Orlando, they're in New York. So when I first started, that was my, I, it was just something to display my photography so I could send it to them and say, Hey, do you need a photographer? I'm going to stuff. And, um, I actually ended up doing some work. Like I, I just, I did some freelance stuff for the source and for, for vibe and double XL. But I think by the time I was really on their radar, 
I had already seen the potential for what ozone could be. And so ultimately my, my goal changed into, you know, hey, let's let's see how far we can take this. Because I think we had really good timing with what was happening throughout the South was a lot of artists had kind of felt overlooked, like record labels were not really signing them or paying attention to them. And so they had a lot of development time to, you know, build their fan base organically and um, develop their sound. So as I started traveling to different cities, I would see came a little bit I would go and see these guys like they were unsigned at the time and I would see them do concerts and everybody knew every song and the crowd was just into them and I was like I was confused like why is the source and I hear why is you know they don't have people really like on the streets in the south and um so that's how I kind of found a, a, a niche to to cover that stuff because nobody else really was doing it and so we became and, and, really the and pulse of what cut, was happening in the south ultimately. and i don't mean to cut you off but that that was so important for orlando that decision that one little decision you seen something that was not being done and you said you took it upon yourself whereas i'm pretty sure everyone else seen that it wasn't being done but you said let me do something about it and you did and it wind up being something very impactful, not only for you, your career, but the careers of many others. Uh, what was that? And shout out to Greg G, um, who will eventually come on the show and say, point once he gets everything done. And shout out to uh, Merck Designs, man. I haven't heard his name in a while. I remember he, it was him and Jesse. You, you, they were the graphic kings of Orlando at the time, um, and well, so you said you did the second issue of Orlando Source, but what was the transition from the Orlando? How did that Orlando Source go to Ozone? Well, Mert and I, um, we we had a little falling out, you know, and it, it wasn't really like a lot of animosity or anything. Um, I mean, we're still, you know, we're still good to this day but um at the time he had hired somebody to put together the Orlando Source Awards and I really didn't like the guy I didn't feel like he was the right person for the job and so that was one there was a couple things that happened that that kind of we were just not in agreement about things and he got upset um well the Orlando Weekly had done a story on the, the Orlando Source Awards and I have to say the weekly never showed us any love. Like they were just Boom. like talk about it, mama. Fuck, fuck the or, fuck the Orlando Weekly. I'm sorry. Talk I mean, about don't it, disrespect mama. anybody. But it's not any any personal any person personally. Like even when we did the the Ozone Awards and we had we brought UGK, we brought Lil Wayne, we brought Ludacris, Plies, Pitbull, Rick Ross. Like that was that had to be one of the biggest things that's ever happened in the city of hip hop. And they just did like a snide little article like basically and like it wasn't complimentary at all so whatever the week but the weekly had done a story on the orlando source awards and they talked to Murph. and i caught I, I had something i wanted to add to the story and i contacted them and said hey i heard you talking to my partner but i also would like to give you some input and they pretty much shut me down like oh we already talked to one person we don't need your we didn't, but i was the one who was doing all the content of the magazine you know, he was handling right. advertisement, but I did all the interviews and all the photos and all the layout and everything. And um, I, I think it was maybe the next day I got a call from the Orlando Sentinel. And the Sentinel did a big profile on me. And because Mert had not, like, so he had not included me in the other story, I was like, well, I'm not going to include him in this. So the way they ended up putting it out was like, uh, like they had my name on the front page and everything. They did a whole spread on me and what I was doing with the magazine. And so that pissed him off. And I, I felt like it was just, you know, I was just doing the same thing he did. But he was very upset about that. And he said, you know, we're not going to do, we're done doing Orlando Source. There's no more Orlando Source. But I had already, like, I... I had already started interviewing people. I had written my editorial. Like, I already had the next issue, like, maybe three-fourths of the way done. And I don't like just leaving stuff unfinished, you know? So 
I was going to just put it out as the last issue. And I, I think it was Mercedes. I have to give a shout out to Mercedes uh, Strictly Streets. You know, she was one of our, well, she really was our street promo person in the beginning. Oh, like, before got involved. And um, I think it was Mercedes who said to me, you know, why don't you just change the name and continue it? And um, I was going to do a, I had been talking with Ruff from the Warheads. I was on TV. And so originally it was going to be like a, we were going to do the TV show together and I was going to name the magazine Ozone and kind of co-promote it. And I think he kind of fell off the map or, you know, it just wasn't, the TV thing didn't pop off, but uh, the magazine did. And so the, the last issue of Orlando Source was the, the first issue of Ozone. And that's why if, if anybody has that issue, which... I doubt too many people do, but that's a that's a historic, it's a piece of history right there. But the first issue of Ozone is the mini, the half size, because it was originally um, Orlando Source, like the digest size, like the you know Jet Magazine kind of. Right, right. And for the for the second the second issue is when Chino got involved, and uh, Chino, you know, came in as my partner and expanded it to being a larger a larger size. Um, issue so uh well let me stop you yeah, there was- let me stop you there let me because you said a lot of stuff and we gotta unpack some of that stuff because that stuff is okay. like the cream cheese on the bagel uh why okay. do you think that orlando weekly snubbed you and snubbed one of the historic events in orlando and why do you think that particular source of material in general doesn't seem to talk about Orlando hip hop in a real way a lot of times. I mean, they, they don't have anybody on the staff who, who knows anything about hip hop. I mean, and no disrespect to, to Swamberger, but they used to cover Swamberger like he was the only hip hop artist in the city. And, right. um, I don't, they just, they, they don't have anybody who knows anything about hip hop and there must have been some, I don't know what the reason is, but they would, they, they would never, you know, have anything positive to say about Ozone. So, are they wow. still and that's, around? Do they still exist? Yeah, they're still around and they still exist. And to your point, um, if you were just looking on the surface, you'd say, okay, well, why would Orlando Weekly promote the Orlando sector? But with that said, for hip hop in Orlando, for for an award ceremony, the first of its kind, really, and to not promote that, but to your point, promote one particular or two particular artists, it, it just seems part of the political strong arm that is uh, media when it comes to the representation of hip hop culture in Orlando. I mean. It, it's not that it happened. Well, they also you. would, if there was something negative that happened, hip hop wise, they also would go out of their way to cover it. So, you know, right. I guess it's just whatever is going to bring eyeballs. I mean, we're not we're not their target audience. So, the average person who reads the weekly, if if people still read it, is probably not, not going to hip hop shows. But yeah, I couldn't answer that, that that question. I don't know if they. I don't know if there was somebody there that just didn't like me or didn't like the magazine, but. You know, they, they just always they always say you don't really get a lot of love at home anyway. So Right, right. But um But that's but that's real that's real talk because for a long period of time it just seemed like it it was at times in my mind and just just me speaking, as biased as Orlando tended to be when it came to divisiveness. Um only only looking out for the people that they know, and that's it, and not expanding outside of that that bubble. Um, and that's what the Orlando, I mean, that's what the um, Orlando Source, Ozone Magazine, that's what that kind of was like, the breaking of that chain, the changing of the guard. It was, you've seen everyone in there. You've seen representation from all parts of the city as well as all parts of the South. And that that was a big deal because you couldn't get that anywhere. You couldn't know, you know, who was the coming up group on this side of town 
without having a copy of that that ozone magazine you know you couldn't know what what was brewing around you and who were doing some of the same things a lot of people met through that magazine a lot of people did business broke bread um you know inspired one another because of that magazine and you would think um an orlando weekly not like the orlando sentinel which is a big medium paper but the orlando weekly would if not at least you know implement something like that but to actually expand on what was already done because they had they had the resources to do it and they had the ability to do it for so long i mean they should have been doing what you were doing from the beginning if, if, you, if you think about it yeah they had a very narrow um i, I mean a lot of those a lot of those publications the people who are writing the articles are, are nine to fivers. They come in the office, you know, and they're corporate. So they're, they're not really in the same mentality. And I think that's where I was a little different. And that's where I was able to, to connect with a lot of artists too, because people would tell me your schedule is, is like a rapper schedule. You know, you're, 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 I work at night and I'm on the road. So um, I'm not in the office eight to five and just just writing about what i can observe there you know you have to be, you have to be in the action to cover it the way i feel right 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 um talk about talk about like you said you're going into that that last issue and for anyone out there that's on this on live right now that's on watching us right now she put out a challenge does anyone have that last copy of the Orlando Source and the first copy of the Ozone magazine. Does anyone out there have that copy? If so, post it. Let let it be known. I don't even. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I, I probably have maybe one or two stashed somewhere. But uh, the first issue of Ozone was was Red Dog on the cover. That was the, that was the first issue of Ozone that was that was going to be the last issue of a. Uh, of Orlando source but and I will say I mean from a from a business perspective I can't remember initially in the beginning I remember being afraid to start a business because financially I didn't have a way to you know I was afraid it would fail and so that's where although I although I disagree with Mert on some things and we had our little issues he he already had a built-in base of advertisers so like men's closet like shout out sammy at men's closet i think that was our most <laughs> consistent advertiser ever but I, I learned a lot from mert about how to how to price things how to off packages and you know how to keep clients consistently happy and so from a business perspective i'm not sure that ozone would have had the financial uh you know started we already in advertisers because I just went back to the same um, people who had already been doing the Orlando Source and said, hey, it's, you know, the magazine's basically the same, but it's a new name. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how things got started. And I think after, I think it was the first year anniversary we did um, the Florida Power issue. And that was kind of a rip off of the Source Power issue where they would highlight people who were, you know, influential behind the scenes. So I went around all over Florida interviewing program directors and DJs, and it, it really enabled me to meet a lot of those people and, and build relationships. And I think after doing a year of Orlando Source, almost I think it was ten or eleven issues we did, <clears throat> and then doing a year of Ozone, I, you know, if you if you fill twenty magazines worth of content with interviews of people from Orlando, I was kind of starting to run out of you know, hey, I've I've covered you know. There's only so many pictures I could take of Pro Style and Nasty, you know. Eventually, I'm going to expand beyond this because they're, you know, right. it, it is a small community. So I feel like we had kind of highlighted all the people that that really were making moves in Orlando. So we started to kind of spread out. And I, I remember getting with that issue. I remember putting like one box in Tampa and getting just overwhelmed with, you know, we used to get email feedback. So it was before social media. So we would get emails and calls at the office and just a lot of people uh, had seen it and, and were really they were really thirsty for having some kind of outlet. So I realized a lot of a lot of cities like Tampa, Jacksonville, Miami, or not so much Miami, but Tallahassee, like kind of smaller cities that were that overlooked a lot. They didn't really have 
a lot right. out as far as to, to have their music put out. Whereas, you know, somewhere like Miami, they do have a couple of radio stations. They do have entertainers coming into town a lot. So they, they weren't maybe as, as hungry for a place to be seen. But um, right. Right. we got a huge response from, from that's when I started to see that, you know, there's, there's really was a market there throughout Florida and not just in Orlando. So it kind of just, it, it kind of grew organically. And so the more that we would put out, you know, Tampa, Jacksonville, uh, Tallahassee, you know, the word would kind of spread. And so we, we'd start to get somebody in Alabama would call and say, why aren't you out here? And, you know, just it, it spread like little by little, we were able to increase printing more copies and get more advertisers and, and it just grew from there. Right. Uh, shout out to DJ Sandman from Tampa, legendary Sandman. He says, uh, the most epic issue of Ozone was the collage of Kia's mugshots. Her, some, somebody said that she was her, I don't know if it was really her manager, but somebody tried to like jump me over that. And really? At, a, at, at, at the old, uh, I think it might've been the old Taboo. Taboo. No, the old, I don't remember which club. One of those clubs in downtown Orlando. I remember being confronted by somebody who said she worked for Kai or was Kai's manager. But as far as I know, me and Kai are good. I've seen her like maybe a few years back. I think she lives in Atlanta now. But uh, I thought that was funny. You know, I think she ultimately used it for her album cover like some years later. So, <laughs> you know, I guess she got over that. The actually, actually fun trivia question. The first Kai album cover was shot in the... Orlando source office. Um, wow. It's like a, you could see like a little white backdrop, and she's I guess she's supposed to be on top of a guy or something like that. But right. it was shot in our in our first office off of uh, John Young Parkway. Shout out so, to the office at John Young Parkway. If you didn't go there or didn't know about that place, you really missed out. The who's who went to that particular office off of John Young Parkway. That was the spot to go. That was the place to be, man. Uh, talk about talk about this Ozone Award. What were you thinking, and what? How did it get to that? To that? To being that epic? You did something that, once again, nobody did in Orlando or cared to do that for Orlando. What was what was the mindset behind that? That was a crazy weekend. Um, so we did the first Ozone Awards in 06. And we just had really good timing because at the time, like, that's when Rick Ross had just come out with Hustlin'. <clears throat> that was huge. Um, Plies had his first mixtape out, and that was, like, just burning up the streets. Um, Pimp C had just come home. Um, we got a last night off of Ludacris. He was doing his MTV Diary. You know, Lil Wayne was at the top of his game, and we were able to get him come perform um so all these artists you know jeezy had kind of just blown up young doc had had a big record uh t-pain had just blown up and there were two things that really sparked the ozone awards coming together um one was the mix show power summit which was a, a dj convention that they had in puerto rico and they were real the organizers were like real funny with me because I would go try to cover the event and they kind of just would treat me like I was a nobody you know like oh you're just some little small man. like I wasn't a big time publication or whatever and they were real right. funny with me and so I was I was complaining about it um at one of the, the conferences like just the way that they would handle me as far as media was kind of disrespectful and uh Sean Prez from from that boy was, was standing there talking to me and he was like well you know you should just do your own show because we at the time we had started um, building a lot of things with, with TJ ZJ. So TJ did the quarterly DJ conference in Tallahassee. So people from all over the South would come and, you know, he kind of complimented each other as far as our skill set. You know, he was really good at um, getting a team together to organize events. And, and I was I was good at kind of uh, marketing and, and, you know, hyping it up and letting people know that it was happening. And so we decided to partner on it. Um, so it was actually, it was TJ ZJ's and the Ozone Awards. It was, and um, the second thing that really helped the Ozone Awards come together was was Khaled's uh, birthday party. He used to do the temple, 
every year at mansion in miami and i would go out every year and every year would get bigger and bigger and he would have everybody you could think of just come touch the stage and it was it was like a very organic you know kind of flow to it and so the, right. the opening set of the ozone awards i kind of just turned that over to Khaled. and so eyes came out nobody really had heard of plies but you got to think like this let me say was was the hottest thing out we had flown in like 200 of the top djs who were all sitting in the front of the auditorium and you know all the big program directors and tons of other media like it was like the who's who of, of the music business and this guy comes out i want to i want to fuck you <laughs> Which ultimately, uh, Snoop and, and uh, Snoop ended up getting that record. That was his like, you know, street record at the time. And so I had even like Pimp C asked, asked me after the show, like, who is that dude? I need to get with him. So Plies came out, but then Khaled took over the rest of the floor set. So he had Pitbull, Rick Ross, and Trick Daddy, and, and Dre from Cool Dre. And it was like a 20 minute <laughs> opener. So Khaled kind of really kicked things off um, in a big way for the show. And, and that was that was something I had seen him do at his at his birthday party. So, yeah, that was a, that was a big. Uh, I'm glad they were there. I'm glad Cali put that together because that that show was like the fact that he even happened, you know, was was kind of a miracle. Um, I can remember going to the Source Awards and seeing the editor um, and the own, you know, Dave Mays and, and Kim Osorio, like you know, posing on the red carpet for pictures. And I guess I never realized that there was an actual, like, they hired a separate, there was a production company that, that was putting the show together. They did that for a living, you know, that's what they do. And right. so we took it on, like, I was basically the producer, you know, and I, I had never done anything like that on that scale ever before. And so it was a lot, you know, just, just the fact that it even happened. I mean, when I, it's funny when I go back and look at pictures, like, I have, every picture I have from that day, I have, like, a white tee on because I never even had time to like just change clothes like it was so I, had, I hadn't slept seriously probably hadn't slept like in in three or four days like before that show and so you know it was a lot um but we pulled it off it happened you know Pimp C and and Bun B came out on stage together and performed we didn't even know really if that was going to happen you know Pimp came through and decided to do that last minute that was an epic moment um Jeezy ran out on stage with them you know, it was, it was just a very, it, it was, I mean, you could watch it now and be like, oh, it was kind of, it was kind of ghetto. I mean, yeah, there was, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a polished, smooth television production, but we also didn't have a, a, a TV budget for it. You know, it well, was, a, I mean, it was definitely a, a grassroots kind of thing. Hmm? Look at what you're saying. You, you never did this before in your life. You put this whole thing in motion and then it actually happened. I mean, like that's that's completely epic, man. That's completely like people could criticize it, can say it's ghetto, can say it's it was bougie, whatever. But to never have done anything like that, and then be able to scale that idea in a way in which all the planets align, all the stars align that night to make it happen. I mean, that's. That's completely epic, considering. Uh, well, you what, know, for what, anybody who doesn't know, anybody who didn't get to experience it, all this stuff is on YouTube. If you look on the Ozone Mac channel, I put up all the, o the 06 Awards was the first one. And um, if you, like, I remember the morning after the show, there was, like, we went back to the auditorium to, to check on something, but there was, like, hand prints and face prints all over the glass and the ticket office. Like, it was... It was craziness, you know, people trying to get wow. in there. And there were so many things that happened, um, so many things that happened that weekend. So it was like a, it was like a against all odds kind of thing that we pulled it off. And, and I will say too, we had no incidents, you know, like people like to talk about, um, you know, people don't know how to, act, artists don't know how to behave and, you know, shooting up award shows or whatever. But we, there was no incidents that weekend aside from if you watch, uh, Trick Daddy got Trick Daddy and Ross had a little tension at the time, and Trick Daddy said, "You know, you know, y'all, y'all, I'm the only mayor of Dade. Y'all are my proteges." He threw the mic down. But there was no, you know, no, no, uh, no incidents, no bloodshed, you know. And um, so in that respect, like it was, it was a huge success. And 
And um, yeah, I was happy with it. You know, that was a that was a crazy weekend. And for a long time after that, I used to just say to myself, like randomly, you know, I'd be I'd, I'd be at the airport with like a couple bags, and I'd get to the escalator, and it's not working, and I gotta pick all the bags up and walk downstairs, and I would just be like. You know, I did the Ozone Awards. Like, you could, this is nothing. Like, you, that was that was like my bar for, you know, just a just a challenge in life that I that I had uh, that exceeded my expectations. I I, w- I would not have ever thought that I would have been in that position. And, and imagine trying to coordinate forty artists entourages, and it was it was crazy. That weekend was was nuts. But uh, and, and that's, yeah, we and pulled that's it off. Completely amazing. Completely, utterly amazing that someone with no event experience could have did what they did and was successfully able to pull it off. And then, you know, like I said, for, for our city, what what was the press? What did you? Was it the continuation of the same? Uh, did did you get any? Good representation via paper, radio, TV, anything. Uh, I mean, def- definitely outside the city. You know, we were. Um, I, I want to say Miami and, and Tampa. We got some good press. You know, um, I have to go back and look, man. This, is, this has been a long time. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the Orlando Weekly and 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 one hundred two jams were never really like too supportive of, of, of the ozone I gotta say but you know I, but at the same time like I mean we're, we're competing I guess you could say competing media outlet we're all competing for the same the right. same dollars the same exclusive so I don't really expect them to, to just be you know waving a flag for us or anything like that but uh, right but it is I mean, annoying we, 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 we it, but at, at, well at that point I mean I didn't care at that point if Orlando media covered it or not because it was it was a big thing in the music business i mean i was getting i remember just looking at my phone after <clears throat> the day after and i had all these texts from you know little john and like people who you know were, were just complimenting me and like hey i heard that your show was like amazing you know congratulations so, right. you know the, the word got out i mean even even if you watch the speech I think it's on YouTube, but that Bun came up and, and got the the award for UGK. He said, "Look, honestly, I, I wasn't really sure if I was gonna come to this show. Like, I thought it was gonna, you know, basically he thought it was gonna be like some little small bullshit or whatever. But he said, you know, now that I'm here, like, I this is real. Like, this is the representation of the South that we needed. You know, this is this is something we're doing for us by us, and and, and I'm down for all. You know, I'm gonna be at all the, the yeah. next." the next year and the year after that. So um, it really proved, uh, it, it really was like us coming together and, and just proving a point, you know, like, and Jeezy came up and got his award. He said, you know, hey, I, I didn't get anything for BET, but I got a ozone, I got a ozone award, you know, ozone was, was out of the streets, you know? And, and I do think my, my, I mean, my memory of this could be a little hazy, but I believe that the BET Hip Hop Awards started right after the Ozone Awards, and I think it was why they decided to do that because they were over. You know, with the the BET Awards were kind of like the Hollywood, Black Hollywood kind of thing, but they were missing a lot of people. You know, like the, the street artists were really not getting recognized. Talk about it, Mama. Yeah, Talk I, about I think it. they started that. Right, it, it you know, and I love that you said that because. You know, we hear this all the time, the saying, there's never any coincidences. It happened for a reason, right? So, like, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it one one bit. And I want to cover your last point um, just to kind of close that point out. Yeah, they're competing. Everyone's competing media sources, and we get that. But the problem is with that philosophy is to your point, to your last point that you just made. It leaves people out. So they do, you know, we'll hear about the Grammys. You know, they'll cover the Grammys. They'll cover, you know, they'll cover something that's, you know, everyone's involved. But to think that they're not covering something that represents their city 
it's just amazing. Like, how do you, how do you have something that huge, not only for hip hop, but and 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 be able to do something that important, and then not cover it? I mean, I part of what I'm saying to you is also what I what I felt like when I came back to to, to Orlando and just realized that, you know. It's it's almost like a city that doesn't represent its city. It's like we're being fed all these things from other cities, but when it comes to the representation of our city, our people, you know, because before you're an, an entity, you're still people. You're out here doing something that no one else is doing to provide access for everyone in their city. That should be talked about. I mean just on a human level like why how can you how can you not say hey um you know even though so and so's over there you you know we got to give her a prop she you know she's doing something to provide uh resources and help and bring light and bring awareness to our amazing talent in orlando especially when you're not even playing the artist you're not even you're not even giving those those artists to kind of like to begin with. It's just frustrating when you know you not only do you have to compete with the world because most cities do, but now you got to compete with the city itself. It's like the city fights you to do what you need to do instead of helping you, instead of instead of kind of giving you some more ammo because we're all united by the city. It's just sometimes they they become the very um, thing in the way, and it forces people to leave the city to look elsewhere and I can't believe or I can't accept that that's the answer like they can't possibly why would you want the people to leave the city to get bigger elsewhere and to do what they could have done here why would you want that how could that be good for business it's not a good business model you know so, what I also want to do, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Mama, talk about it. Were you saying something, Mama? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Uh, let, you brought up UGK, so that's a good segue to go into, how did you start solidifying that relationship with Pimp C? And how did that, how did that biography come together? And, um, you know, how, how did you, how did that come about after, you know, the awards and all of this stuff? Talk about that. Uh, it really was before the awards. I mean, I, I feel like that's why he um, came and performed because he, he really saw the movement that we had with Ozone and I met him when he was incarcerated. We we did a an interview with him. He was on the cover. And that was part of uh, something that Asylum Records had put together. They were putting out an album, I believe, on him. And um, so they arranged or helped us arrange to be able to go to the prison and interview him and sway as much as people went and interviewed him. And so that's where I met him. But I had already started like sending him some magazines prior to me coming. And so when I went and met him, he said. Who's, whose magazine is this? And I said, me. And I'm, you know, I'm this little big girl. He's like, you, this is your magazine? I said, yeah. So when he got out, um, he had he, he had me come out and take some pictures of him with his, you know, he, he had got his Bentley and his jewelry. And cause I took some pictures of him when he got out of prison. And I think he felt like that wasn't really like the look he wanted to put out. So once he got that right, you know, he wanted to do a photo shoot and, um, I think, you know, he, he was obviously established as, as a, being a, a legend in entertainment. <laughs> Excuse me. Legend. I've been talking too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> he had, uh, he had a reputation of course as, as being a legendary producer and, but his time, it kind of. You know, this by the time he got out, it was it was 2005. You know, his his hits were back in the 90s, so there was, there was like a younger generation kind of coming coming of age that they might have heard of UGK, but they didn't really know 
I mean, including myself, like didn't really have an understanding of, of fully the history and what he was responsible for musically. And right. so I think he, he felt like it was a good collaboration for us. With we, we were sort of the the young, new, hot thing on the block, and we were the ozone to see what was the, the you know what was hot in the streets. And he was sort of the OG that that needed to kind of reconnect with that crowd. So it was a good um, it was a good working relationship. And so that's how I got to know him. And and uh, he spoke highly of me to his mom and. So after he passed, I, I approached her with the idea of doing the book, and that's how um, that came about. So Sweet Jones, MC's Trill Life Story, for anybody who hasn't read it, it's on Amazon. That was a, a, a passion project that I worked on for five years before it actually came out, and uh, I'm happy with the response to it. You know, a lot of a lot of true UDK fans really appreciated it. So. Oh, man, that, that, that is completely, completely amazing. Uh, that you were able to, to do that, not only, you know, write a book, which is a labor of, of itself, but, you know, write a book of talking about hip hop, pushing the culture forward and, 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 and giving light to one of the great staples in hip hop. Um, all right, keep that, uh, let's see. Uh, what are some of the craziest moments in your career that, if not brought you to this complete, you know, laughter, or maybe just completely shocked you that, oh my God, I can't believe like, this is going on. Talk about maybe a crazy moment without necessarily uh, incarcerating anybody, but what, what are some of the funniest things you've seen in your career so far? Oh man, I, th- I think you might have got those stories out of me already. Just just the Ozone Awards weekend, it was just so much stuff that happened. Man. I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can think of just one, but uh, right, that, yeah. that weekend was was historic. And we put up the uh, we put up the Amazon uh, dress, Sweet Jones, the Trill story. Please make sure you guys go support this Orlando legend. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to bring you to one of my favorite moments of the show which is top five dead or alive. Now you've been around a lot of artists, you've been, a lot of, been around a lot of things over, over, over your career. Uh, let's do top five dead or alive rappers, MCs, go. Tupac, Andre 3000, Lauren Hill, Pimp C, and pre Kardashian Kanye. Damn, or girl! Jeezy. Jeezy. It's, it's t- the last one's a tie between a tie between old Jeezy and old Kanye. Although you I mean, new Jeezy is still he's still dope. You know, I, new Kanye, I can't really understand what what his what he's trying to do, but yeah, that's my top five. Wow, that that just rolled off your tongue like nothing. Uh, top five, since um, I was honored and blessed to be in the the issue of hottest DJs in Orlando, top five DJs, dead or alive, go. Oh, I have no idea. You, you, you stumped me on that one. Man, listen, um, I've been on the road. Uh, I don't think I've eaten since about noon. I'm currently I'm, I'm involved with some things for the Georgia Senate runoffs. Um, oh, yeah, oh, friends oh. or family in Georgia. It's very important for them to come to come vote. So I've been uh, I just left a Reverend Knox event in Augusta, and uh, so I've been covering a lot of that stuff. And the runoffs are January fifth, so we've got a couple crazy weeks ahead. But uh, yeah, but DJs, I I don't know. There's there's so many DJs. Um, I don't know if I can name five, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna have to wrap this up and and go uh, eat before I pass out pretty soon. So do, okay. do any, any no last minute um, fine topics that you want to touch on? Well, well, tell the people what 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 you got going on right now. You just mentioned one of them, 
Georgia runoffs, man, which are important. People go out there and make sure you vote. Uh, and what else? What what else can they find, or what else you got going on that people can look for when it comes to all things Julia Miller? Um. Well, I, I I also work with Jay Prince on his book, um, The Art and Science of Respect. So you pick that up also on Amazon. Um, I'll, I have a couple other things I'm working on, but uh, uh, you know, this year I, with entertainment concerts and stuff, pretty much at a standstill. I kind of just started focusing on a few other things. Um, I'm into the real estate world a little bit. Um, I'm, a, I'm a licensed realtor in Georgia, and, and pretty soon in Florida as well. I might start might start coming down a little bit more. Um, dealing with the real estate stuff, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I started just keeping up with you know obviously politics this year has been has been a hot topic. It's it's very important to understand what's going on for the future. Of our so yeah, right now I'm I'm uh, traveling to a lot of the events for, for Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. We're running for the Senate here in Georgia. So if you have any friends or family in Georgia, or if you're to the show and you're in Georgia, you know, definitely go vote in the runoffs. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, and you know, not to cut you short, but yeah, I'm I, I'm a one day I gotta I gotta you know go get something to eat and, and get myself together. Appreciate you including me in this in this series. It's an honor to be to be considered a, an Orlando a, you know legend and, and, and representative. So. Shout out to everybody who uh, I think we talked about. You know, a lot of folks. I mean, and and I forgot to mention Malik, but you know, Malik was another early, early ozone crew that that uh, you know was was a big part of um, kind of helping our momentum build up too. So you know, shout out to everybody who who uh, helped out ozone at the beginning, and uh, you know helped it helped it grow into something. I'm glad that. I'm glad we were able to represent for the city, and it, it was a great thing for, for me career-wise, just to kind of, you know, help help launch other things I wanted to do. So, um, you know, I don't I don't know that I'd be running around, uh, filming all these campaign events if I didn't have the experience that I had gained from uh, from Ozone. Every it really ended up taking me around the world. You know, literally, um, I was able to travel around the world off of hip hop and just see some amazing things. So, yeah. Um, well, we that's we about we it. Can. We damn sure, as a city, and I know that's people. I'll, I'll name you. I'll name you as the the, the top five DJs. I'll, I'll put you as like the like the. Who's the guy on the band who said Dylon? Dylon, 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 Dylon. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you top five top five DJs. What do you go no, by uh, these days, Sue? Yeah, <laughs> you you you. Top five, Sue, Sue, Sue. Sue. <laughs> Sue and Sue. Right, right. I, I, you're, you're too amazing. Hey, we love you, man. We love the contribution you did. Shout out to everything, Julia Beverly, man. I'm honored that you joined the show. I know you're busy, man, and um, you're doing important work, continuing to impact the world. You're busy woman. <laughs> huh? What'd you say, Mama? A busy woman. You, you, said, you said I'm a busy man. No, I said, I said, uh, you're I know, busy. I know gender is fluid these days, but. Yeah, you're a busy woman. Okay, okay. You're, you're a busy woman out here uh, doing your thing. I thought thing. you said busy man. I, I just had to correct you. Oh, no, you could, my love. Uh, but anyway, yeah, man, we, we love you. And um, hey, man, you've done, you've done so much. You've done so much. It's just, like I said, we are, we're, as a city, we should be fully indebted to a lot of the stuff that you did and we're, we're better for it that you did it. So thank you, Julia Beverly, for joining the Sound of Orlando show. Yeah, thanks thanks for having me. And shout out to Orlando too. And Orlando gave me my, my start. So I always have love for the city. And, you know, I, I make it back every now and then. It looks a lot different, so. Yeah, it is. It is. It's changed a lot. <laughs> It is. Well, thank you, thank you, Julie. Thank yeah, you. thank you for having me, and and uh, and good luck with the rest of the series, the rest of the show. Thank you. We'll be in touch.
Thank you, Julia, All joining right, the bye. show. Joe, tonight, legend. This is what we do. This is the Soul Show. This is your boy Ro, live and direct. And next week will be an another amazing week in Orlando hip hop history. Um, man, I'm I'm just loving the people that are coming on, with having a chance to tell their story. Shout out to everybody that tuned in tonight. Um, we love you, man. We love the support. Hey, tell a friend, tell a friend. Like and follow at the Soul Show. Please believe me, this show survives on the likes and follows. Come next year, we're going to be taking this show to YouTube and Twitch. So big things are coming in the new year, man. Glad you guys are supporting. We love all y'all, man. Stay tuned for more next week. Until then, God bless. Let's go.